Today, we're going to talk about China. Um, I was going through internet and I found a video about China. China comparing Chinese attitude with children compared to Africans. It is really shocking to see how Chinese treat their children compared to what Africans do with theirs. Okay. First of all, thank you very much for being here. I just want to tell you, I know some of you watched one of our videos where we had a podcast talking about um, African and black women, how they treat black men. And I know it was very salty. Many people did not like what was said. And many people spilled a lot of, uh, you know, distasteful comments. I just want to tell you this, okay? Uh, we're not going to create a toxic environment here. Not here. One of those toxic environments, looking like one of those African-American podcasts, red pill podcasts, where you are at the wrong channel. Not here. We don't do that here, okay? In this community, we can talk about anything. And in fact, it's very necessary that we talk about anything because that's the only way you can heal the wounds that people have. Okay, so here we are about healing and healing is a process. Healing, it's about talking. You cannot stop people from expressing themselves on how they feel, but you can contribute to moving them to the right direction. Anybody can talk anything. We will have a lot of people, you know, you think you have heard, you haven't heard anything. We're going to have people on board that's going to be talking about things that you don't necessarily agree to. So just because you don't agree to something, it doesn't mean you should come and spill all your issues, personal problems, and bleed all over everybody. We don't need that yet, okay? If you don't like it, bye-bye. Uh, all right. Thank you very much for all of us. I love you very much. Thank you. Welcome. You know how this is. This is one big family. Nobody's going to stop us from sharing how you feel. Okay. So we are in China. In China... Fellas, you ought to ask yourself questions, okay? China was a relatively poor country by the end of World War II, okay? They went through a lot of issues, a lot of difficulties. And African nations were sort of freed, okay? They got independence around 1960. China today is miles away from African nation. It's a superpower. What was the secret? Let's watch this video about Chinese kids compared to African kids. Let's go. What's that? Some sort of kung fu, karate. Wow, look at that. Oh my God, that clearly requires a lot of discipline. Look at that. Amazing. These are girls, right? These, these are girls being prepared for war. Look at look at look at look at that. That shows the amount of energy, of concentration and investment into a future generation. There's no oh that's my daughter, that's my little baby. Oh, I have some chocolate. Amazing. Oh my god. They're even teaching them how to manipulate guns. What are they doing here? Oh, they're cleaning the gun. I mean, these kids look like, what, five, six years old? Oh, my African babies. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Music, music, music. Music, music. Okay, the kids are happy, but you don't live of happiness, you know. I mean, clearly they can dance, but <sighs> let's watch what's next. Okay, look at this little Chinese boy. What is this, like gymnastics or something? How old is this kid? Probably like six years old, being trained by a lady. Being asked to jump higher. The boy is not crying. Wow.
Wow. So, fellas, this breaks my heart. Okay? This breaks my heart. I mean, as much as we can say uh, that... I mean, it's nice being an African. Look at these kids as well. These kids are probably from Uganda or something. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my God. Future Michael Jackson. I mean, you got some skill, huh? some real skills. Okay, so this is very nice to see. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm very happy to see these kids, our kids be very happy, dancing, jumping and feeling happy. It's beautiful. I mean, Africans in general, are happy people okay most of the time they're happy they're going to be dancing celebrating uh we celebrate in some places in africa you see people celebrating even death for many 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 weeks okay celebrate like in ghana you see people celebrating somebody's life for many many days that's african celebration compared to chinese you can see these kids were being built for the future they were being prepared for the future. Young girls training like soldiers, like no crying, no uh, sulking, none of that. Powerful things, obviously, whether, I don't know this, if this is voluntary or it's uh, by obligation, but the end, the end goal is still the same. The final situation will be creating a society of people that are very strong. Very strong mean, um, very strong in terms of mental, very strong in terms of community, very strong in terms of nation. Okay, and you cannot compare. I'm sorry. Can you compare these two people? I mean, put these people 20 years later. Can you compare them? Would you be able to compare them? I mean, you got these kids opening up weapons, cleaning up, uh, yeah, shotguns, whatever that is, working on engineering programs and stuff like that, compared to these other kids that are just dancing. And okay, this is taken from a video that I saw on the internet. I'm just going to go through the video. I'm just going to go based on a video I saw on the internet. And I'm not uh, disputing the fact that there are uh, other kids in Africa that are obviously somewhere doing some positive things. But on a scale of nations, China is doing a tremendous work that we cannot compare to them. Do you know that if you compare TikTok, you go through TikTok, African TikTok, the majority of things you're going to find it's either dances, people dancing, doing challenges. Is that what they call it? Challenges or insult. Yes, in some areas of Africa, it's just about insulting people. So you find somebody's video, you don't like his face, you start insulting them, saying bad things about their face. If you don't like the, their mouth or their teeth, you, it's, it's, it's unbearable. If you look at the TikTok that TikTok has presented to the Chinese kids, it's completely different. The TikTok of the Chinese kids is got a time frame. So you can only go on TikTok for a few hours. After that, it blocks itself to prevent kids from becoming addicted. And their TikTok is science oriented. It teaches them how to build things, how to build guns, how to build computers, how to know geophysics, how to do chemistry. So the TikTok of Chinese people released for the Chinese kids are an instructional TikTok. The objective and the goal is to build the kid into becoming something superior. And the TikTok for Africans and other people it's generally rap music, it's dancing, it's jumping, it's comedy and stupid things. How can we combat that? How can we compete with China? How is that even possible? China itself per year produce over 800,000 engineers. 800,000 minimum engineers are produced from China every single year. Uh, how will you be surprised that these people have progressed tremendously from World War II to now? Okay, look at how China was. It was villages. Look at how China it is today. There is not a single country in the world that is as advanced as China is in terms of technology. They've invested tremendously into technology. They have some of the best hackers in the world. They have some of the best surveillance systems in the world. Okay, the Chinese people constructed, they built uh, African Union building. 
the African Union building, I mean, this is the building where African comes together, African countries come together to discuss matters of Africa, was built by the Chinese in Addis Ababa. And this building was a gift by the Chinese to the Africans. And later on, they discovered that this building was riddled with traps, with microphones, listening microphones, with hidden cameras. And every single night of every week, this server in Addis Ababa was sending data to a server in China. Obviously, how can you complain? You can't even build your own building where you have your own meetings. You have to bring in China to do it. Obviously, you think China's going to do it for free? They're going to do it for free for you. But there must be some sort of compensation. And the compensation was every weekend data left Addis Ababa for China. So they heard everything, you know, all the conversation people had in a, in a big hall, conversations in the toilet on the cell phone, conversation in the corridors, because there was microphones everywhere and, and, and cameras. So China has been investing tremendously into technology. That's why they have weapons, they have nuclear weapons, and nobody can bully them. Why do you think nobody can bully them? Because they have so much for themselves today. How did they get there? Because they cut away everything that distraction to them. In China, I don't, I don't know if in China you're allowed to take the Bible. Are you allowed to? I'm not 100 percent. You need to double check that. So China has cut away many of the external information that's not beneficial to them. They have cut it away. And I'm not saying we should copy China. I'm saying that you need to copy even from your adversaries the things that are working for them that's pushing them forward. Let me give you a very simple example. Do you know that in Holland during World War II? When Hitler soldiers came in, they installed a system, a postal system to, for distribution that Dutch people never had in the past. Okay, this worked really, really efficiently in Holland. But even when the Germans left their land, they surely left their land, but the system still works up until now. People in Holland still use the German system brought by Hitler. What does that say to you? Somebody can be your opponent, but you can still learn from them. You can still acquire things that are positive, that are working for them. Africa is not producing any engineers. Okay, the engineers that are being produced in Africa are being criticized by Europe and UNESCO. They say they're not competent. How are we going to compete in the future? Just remember during COVID, we were unable to defend ourselves. Africa was begging for tablet and medication and vaccine to come from Europe and USA to protect their own people. I mean, imagine that. It's such a big continent, billions of people, unable to protect themselves, but very active when it comes to dancing, music, distraction, and hating on each other. That's extremely sad. African nations were begging for vaccine. Why? Because we don't have people that are competent enough. Yes, there are very few of them. Not enough for such a massive continent. China has produced 800,000 engineers every year, minimum. Africa doesn't produce anything near that. I would love to give you statistics by countries, but I can't because it's too small. It's shameful. And the same for the African-American community. I know there's plenty of them that watch us. The African-American community is not producing enough engineers. There are not many doctors in African-American communities. In fact, a lot of African-American people are in jail. Many of them are in jail. Whether it's because of the right decision by the judge or not, plenty of them are in jail. So if you are in jail, when are you going to become engineer? and protect your community or build your neighborhood. If you spend some time in jail, when are you going to become a doctor? Who's going to give you an opportunity? Because they're probably going to label you, oh, that's a convict doctor. Nobody's going to go to you. Fellas, we need to invest into the right things. I think when you give technology to your children, let's be responsible enough to guide them through the right direction, to guide them through learning, through acquiring knowledge. It's not just about playing games, video games and dancing. Yeah, dancing is good. But let me tell you something. The countries that dance the most, even in Africa, are the most messed up countries in Africa. You can double check that. Countries that people dance all the time are the poorest, the most unsophisticated, the most uh, immigrants like. I mean, most people go for immigration like any other countries. So they say, except for South Africa, most of the countries. Let, let me find you this. According to a report by UNESCO, Africa continues to have the lowest number of engineering professionals per capita in the world. More worrying is the finding that the quality of engineers in most countries is low. The quality of engineers are low. So even though there are very less engineers, even those who are supposedly engineers, their quality is extremely low. 
there are no indication that the situation is likely to improve soon. The report points out that without high-quality engineers, development in key sectors such as agriculture, energy, mining, water, and disaster reduction could remain stagnant for decades. So, for agriculture, energy, mining, water, disaster reduction, we need proper engineers. And I'm not talking about these engineers that come out of university. I'm an engineer. I'm an engineer. Some of these engineers, you let them do engineering, they're going to kill people because they, they don't know. They were just copying somebody else's text. That's the truth of it. So UNESCO has discovered that Africa is producing very little number of engineers. And on top of that, these engineers are very bad quality because they're not proper engineers. They've been cheating. Some of them have been reading texts from their friends. I mean, Africans are very sharing like that. And some of them have been talking to the professor. Professor, here's your $150 for me to pass classes. Forgetting that the engineer is a very, very sensitive sector. Unfortunately, in Africa, the understanding of alignment of engineering standards and the quality of engineering graduates in terms of international standards remain questionable. So Africans' engineer level is questionable compared to international standard. Presently, only South Africa is a signatory of International Engineering Alliance for both educational and mobility agreement. Only South Africa is a signatory because in order for you to be an engineer, you need to be affiliated with the World Class Association. Okay? And only South Africa is affiliated to this association. And obviously, fellas, you know why? Because uh, courses of engineering Southern in South Africa during apartheid when the country was still within the end of the white people. And obviously, we know uh, how they function. They registered, they wanted a good standard, and that's why South Africa up until now uh, is registered to this standard. Some African countries have no national registration bodies, nor do they have professional institutions that would cater for engineers' professional development. So these guys are engineers by paper after writing an exam not necessarily engineers on the field. And it is very sad. Why do we have to talk about this? Because fellas, China, after World War II, was a poor country. There was villages and nothingness. I don't want to say the same for Africa. We know Africa was colonized, okay? And yes, Africa was freed in the 1960s. But up until now, we're still late. It's very sad. Look at Singapore. Singapore was freed at the same time as African nations. But in Singapore, one Singaporean is a millionaire in dollar. One Singaporean out of 35. So you count 35 people, one of them is a millionaire in dollars. 35 people, one of them is a millionaire in dollars in Singapore. They don't even have diamonds. They don't have gold. They have no lithium. They have no manganese. They have nothing like that. They only use their brains to develop their country. Singapore has reclaimed the land from the sea because it was submerged by water. They push the ocean back to get in the sea. What type of brains do they have while we're still fighting each other? Oh, you Nigerians, we don't want you here. You Ghanaians, you eat too much. You people, you dance all the time. I don't like your face. You don't like mine. They are pushing the ocean back to get land and create houses and shelter for the people. We need to wake up, fellas. Why are we making stupid comments about, oh, the black woman is this, the black woman... There are more important issues we need to... You can't judge me based on one video you watch of me. You don't know me. You still have a lot to know about me. Maybe I can learn about you too, but you still have a lot to learn about me. You have no idea. Just because you disagree on one subject, you think you can put me to the side and say, okay, this is how I think you think. You, 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 have, no, you have no intelligence if you think that way. And in fact, you can learn from somebody actually you don't agree with. We may not agree with on, on one subject. Maybe we have 97% of subjects we agree with or we have the same direction. Are you going to dismiss somebody just because of one thing? We need to move beyond that hurt that many people have. Move above it. Move beyond that divide that most Africans have. Judgmentalism of, oh, these people are this way. Those people are that way. Putting people into boxes. It's okay not to be okay with each other. It's fine. That's how you find solutions. Maturity is going through those problems and resolving them. We have bigger issues. No engineers, no doctors. These engineers we have are just engineers on paper because they paid the university and stuff like that. No university, no country is affiliated apart from South Africa. It's very sad. That means all these engineers, when they go to other countries, they cannot be hired as engineers. With the amount of engineers Africa is supposed to have, we should be able to create our own weapons. With the amount of engineers we have, 
Africa should be independent in terms of technology, communication, satellites, cell phones. With the engineers that we supposedly have, we should have our own trains, build our own railways, have our own infrastructure. But we don't have that. We can criticize things. We can be okay with criticizing things, provided that we find solutions. And the only way to find solutions to issues is when you talk about them, even when they are very uncomfortable. God bless.